You know, here in this church and in this philosophy, we believe in letting the power of God, the presence of God, and even the mind of God stretch out in us. For Jesus, the mastermind, declared, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And here in this church, we even teach people to let the idea of success and prosperity stretch out in their minds, because this is a success church. Now, let's say that with me. I think that's a pretty good affirmation. Come on. This is a success church. And on these telecasts and on these broadcasts, you're always hearing testimonies about success. And we do not apologize for being a success church. And we do not apologize for teaching people success. Sometimes people say, well, Reverend Ike, isn't this materialism that you're teaching people by teaching them success and prosperity? But listen, even the good old book, the Bible declares, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And so I say, if success and prosperity are not being added unto you, then something is wrong with your religion. You know, there was a time, and it still is with some of you, we were taught that in order to please the Lord and to serve God, maybe you shouldn't have anything. And some people tried to make us believe that perhaps the poorer you were, the more you could love the Lord. But let me tell you something. I can love the Lord a lot better when I have enough money to pay my bill. <laughs> I can love the Lord a lot better when I have a decent place to stay. How about you? And so we're always teaching success and prosperity in this ministry. Every month I publish a new success idea and send out to those who write to me, teaching people how to use their minds to be successful, how to use their own minds to be and do and have the good which they desire. And some time ago, I began especially to teach people what we call here the visualization prayer treatment. Say that with me because this may be new to some of you and to some of our television audience. The visualization prayer treatment. Come on. The visualization prayer treatment. I began to teach that to the congregation here. And uh, very briefly, visualization is using your imagination, using your imagination to see the good which you desire to be, to do, and to have. That's visualization. And those of you who are students of the science of living, you may whip out your pen and paper if you want to. This is a telecast, but this is a teaching church. This is a teaching ministry. And I want you to write down that definition for visualization. And in just a moment, we're going to call some people to the platform who are going to tell you how these visualization prayer treatments have been working for them in ways of success and prosperity. It's, isn't this wonderful? I even see a 79-year-old lady over here taking out her pad and pencil. Isn't that beautiful? Getting ready to write. I wonder if the camera can pick her up. Mama, stand up for a moment. Wave your pen and pencil over, over here at these people. Look at that. You see that? We have students here. She's in her 80th year. And do you know she had been given up to die before she was exposed to this ministry? And here she is learning in her 80th year. Give her a big hand. Isn't that something? You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. All right, Mama. So now I'm going to give that definition again for visualization. Visualization is using your imagination. to see yourself 
being, doing, and having the good which you desire. And I'm going to repeat it again, and I don't preach formal sermons, uh, even though I studied theology and homiletics and what's that other big word that they teach you in the theological cemetery? I mean seminary. <laughs> Hermeneutics. <laughs> I studied all of that, but I found out that people need a practical truth to set them free. So I'm going to purposely repeat to you so that it might get down into your subconscious mind. Visualization is using your imagination to see yourself being doing and having the good which you desire. And may I say unto you, you are only going to get out of life what you in your imagination see yourself being, doing, and having. And you're not going to accomplish anything or get anything until you reach that point where you can use your imagination to see yourself being, doing, and having the good which you desire. This is why we teach the use of the imagination. This is why we use the process of visualization here. A few weeks ago, while I was teaching the visualization process to those who wanted new automobiles, and so many people started materializing or demonstrating beautiful new automobiles around here, there was a 14-year-old girl who comes here with her mother and her grandmother who decided in her own mind that she wanted to start coming to the services of this church in a brand new Cadillac. How about that? And so she started using my visualization prayer treatment, seeing herself being brought to this church by her mother in a new Cadillac every Sunday. And do you know and she said to her mother, by the way, when she started visualizing this, she said, Mama, I want you to take me to Reverend Ike's church in a Cadillac. And they began visualizing this. And a few days afterward, things worked out so that they could get a brand new Cadillac Coupe de Ville. And they're here tonight, Miss Cartier and Mrs. Cartier, her mother, and also the grandmother. Bring them to the platform at this time. Give them a great big hand as they come. And while they're coming, I want to say this to you. You can use this visualization treatment to obtain and to accomplish anything which you desire. So these people used it for a new automobile, a new Cadillac. That's what they wanted. And you may call this materialistic if you want to, and I say it is materialistic. But if that's what they wanted, that's what they wanted, and that's what they got. Now, you can use this principle of visualization to get whatever you want. Now, uh, young lady, you come over here a moment. Now, what's your name? Valerie Cartier. And what was it that got into your head to tell your mother that you wanted to be driven to this church in a new Cadillac? Oh, a car was breaking down. <laughs> Oh, you had an old car that just kept breaking down, huh? Right. Did you hear me teaching these visualization prayer treatments about how to visualize and see yourself being, doing, and having the good which you desire? Yes, I did. And uh, you passed that. Tell us about how, how you use the visualization prayer treatment in, in your own way. By the way, give the audience your name first. Valerie Cartier. And what city are you from? New York. And uh, how old are you now? Fourteen. You go to school then, I guess. Yes. Where? Um, junior high school, 135, and I'm graduating this year. Give her a great big hand, all these wonderful young people who are in school and graduating. It just goes to show you that all the young people aren't going to the, all the young people aren't going to the dogs. Now, just how did you practice visualizing seeing yourself in a new car? Well, while I was here, when Reverend Ike was um, teaching us how to visualize, I would lean back in my seat, get all relaxed, stretch out my legs, had my envelope with money in it. <laughs> um, 
and start seeing myself in this brand new Coupe de Ville Cadillac green. Even the color you picked out in your visualization. Right. So, um, sitting back, leaning back, just seeing myself being chauffeured by my mother. <laughs> Sitting in the back seat, just stretching out, leaning back, just looking around while my mother was driving and everything. Did you actually get full of the feeling of, of being in this uh, Cadillac while you were doing this visualization? Yes, I did. Isn't that beautiful? Now, Miss Cartier, why don't you step over here for just a moment and let me hear your end of it. Uh, you said that this young lady, after coming around here to these services, just politely told you that she wanted to start uh, arriving at church in a new Cadillac, huh? Oh, yes, she did, Reverend Ike. Oh, what did you think about it when oh, she said well, that? Well, I, I, oh, I, I liked the idea. And uh, that Sunday in the service, we dropped a note and, asked, you know, wrote you a note and asked you to pray for us to get a Cadillac. And then you gave us the visualization. And so, I didn't pick it up here, but when I went home that night, I lay in the bed and I start driving this Cadillac in the uh, green and beige, cooped to be a Cadillac, just like I have now. I start driving it for three nights straight. And then, on, <laughs> and then that, that Monday morning, I woke my husband up and I told him, I said, let's go look at some Cadillacs. He said, oh, I said, I don't want to just go look at it. If I go out there, I'll buy you a Cadillac. And so we did. We went out and we had two old cars. The first deal we went to, he said, I'll give you $500 for it. And I said, no, with the stuff Reverend Ike used, I can get more for this car. <laughs> so, so we went to another dealer. So he gave us $1,400 for the old car. And then uh, he told me to bring another car. And we traded. In three days, I had the new coupe to be a Cadillac. Isn't that beautiful? Everybody say, wonderful. wonderful. You know, you told us something on last Sunday, too, when you gave your testimony for the radio, that, uh, that you people have really found a great joy of living since you've been coming here. And you know what impressed me so much? You said that even in your house you have crystal chandeliers. Oh, yes, Reverend I Well, the first time when I was in your service at Madison Square Garden, well, we saw your ad in the paper. And so my husband said, well, let's go down there and see who this man said you can have your pie now with ice cream on top of it. Said, let's go and see what this is all about. And so we decided we'd go. We didn't know it was a dressed up affair. We thought it was a sporty affair. We hadn't noticed. So we went on down in Slacks and Sporty Affair and got there. We could hardly get in. So we went all the way to the top. And so you said that um, some, uh, you know, some of us people would be blessed that next week. And so that next week, we was blessed. And then I got my first piece of mink. I got a mink stole that next week. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I got healed because uh, I had been very sick. And, uh, and I was taking so much medicine, I had to go and get a lot of medicine. I had to bring it home in a shopping bag. So after that Sunday, I threw all the medicine away. I haven't taken any medicine since I was in that service at Madison Square Garden. And I started attending these service the next Sunday, and I haven't missed a Sunday since. And you folks are really experiencing the joy of living. Oh, yes, we are, Reverend Ike. We live in a lovely, nice air-conditioned apartment. I do have the chandeliers and the velvet bedspread, just like I said. <laughs> and, uh, and three weeks ago, I wanted to paint it because you have to do your own thing there as a co-op. And so I lay in my bed, and I did one of your visualization. All these colors just popped out of my head, and we did our own thing ourselves. Isn't that wonderful? I'm so happy for you wonderful people who are experiencing the joy of living. Now, I want to talk uh, to the youngest member of your family, uh, Mama over here. Mama, are they giving you rides? Let's go a little closer to them here so that the cameras can get them. Are you enjoying riding around in that new Cadillac with these folks? Yes, I sure do. <laughs> they're, not, they're not just putting us on, telling us that they have that, uh, that they're being blessed like this, are they? Is yeah. it really the truth? Yes, it's the truth. And I guess, I guess you're young enough to tell the truth. How young did you say you are? I was 79. When will you be 80? The end of the month. The end of this month. The end of this month. So you're really 80. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Let's give them all a great big hand, everybody. God bless you.
It's a pleasure to have you in this church and in this ministry. How much more shall be added unto you? How much more shall be added unto you? Don't sit down yet. I want to interrogate you a bit. And I want to be a bit redundant about that beautiful scripture. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible is not against prosperity. Let's analyze that verse of scripture again in its two parts. Seek you first the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Some people think that the kingdom of God is up in the sky somewhere. The astronauts never found it. They've been all the way to the moon. I'm sorry for some of you people, it probably blew your mind. <laughs> when the kingdom was not found in the sky. But they've been to the moon, they didn't see it. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, but lo, the kingdom of God is within you. What really is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the presence of God in you. Let's put that in the first person and let's speak that to ourselves here with hands and voices by saying the kingdom of God is the presence of God in me right here, right now. Come on. The kingdom of God is the presence of God in me right here, right now. Will you lift your hands for the final blessing? And now I say unto you that the love, the power, the peace, the joy, all of the goodness that God is, go with you. Thank Above you and beneath you. Thank beside you. Thank around you. Thank behind you. Within you, and before you, and make smooth, beautiful, and perfect your way. 